The following interview was conducted with Al Pounders, Professor Emeritus of Art and Design for the Purdue University Oral History Program. It took place on Wednesday, May 2nd, 2012 at his residence in West Lafayette, actually his studio, which is on uh, behind the house. The interviewer is Catherine Marquis, Professor Emeritus of Library Science. Welcome. And good morning, Doc. Good morning. Professor Powers. Good morning. Um, tell us a little bit about where you were born and your parents and early years. Well, I was born in Gould, Arkansas. My mother, my mother's family, who I grew up with, uh, were Polish Americans in Buffalo, New York. Uh, she met my father, and uh, who was from Arkansas, and took her to meet his family, uh, and that's where I was born while we were en route. Um, and after that, it was very rocky because he disappeared. Um, as a matter of fact, he disappeared into Attica State Prison. <laughs> um, and so I grew up on welfare with my mother in Buffalo. Uh, Are you an only child? Yes. Okay. Well, he had two other daughters by other women, um, but um, I've met them each one time. They're off someplace. One is in Texas, and the other one's in Arkansas. Uh, but you know, we have really no connection. I met my grandmother once, um, uh, my my you know, father's mother. I never knew my Polish grandfather because he was killed in uh, an accident at Bethlehem Steel Plant in Lackawanna, New York, when my mother was 11. All her. She and her three siblings uh, went right to work. There were no right to work. There were no child labor laws in those days. When you yeah. didn't, when you didn't have a father to support you, you went to work. So I came from a, you know, a background without books and without art and without any of those things. These were people who worked in, in steel mills and factories and on the railroad. All the men were railroad men on her side of the family. And I was really lucky. I was sort of brought up by these nuns <coughs> in, uh, in St. Anne's School. Is this the grade uh, school you went to? I went with the grade school I went to. Uh -huh. And um, I sort of got adopted by a man who I worked, when I was 14 I was legally able to work, so I worked after school on Saturdays for the rest of my life like that. And um, he knew that I had some art talent and he w made sure that I went to a, an art high school. Nobody else in my family cared about that sort of thing. And so I did that and I also uh, went on to go to an uh, to the Albright Art School in Buffalo where I got a scholarship. And, uh, Would this be an, at the high school level? or and this The art school is after high school. Okay. I, I did a three year art program at the Albright Art School which uh, trained me to be a graphic designer. But I met painters while I was there, and they changed my life. And so I knew that I wasn't suited for the business world, so I figured somehow I'll be a painter the rest of my life and figure out the, the living part as well. And that's the way it's been ever since. Uh, my teaching careers have always been based on if I'm in my studio, I'm a good teacher. You keep me out of my studio, I'm not as good as I could be. <laughs> You're familiar in your own environs. <laughs> That's right. All right, and comfortable. Right. Okay. So, very rocky childhood. <clears throat> my mother was very unhappy. It was a, you know, very bad home situation. Um, but I survived, and. Um, well, now after the art school, now was that at the after high school? Yes. Or? Okay, and it was in Buffalo. In Buffalo. All right. Yeah. It and you got a certificate or a degree. I got a certificate, a three-year certificate, but I realized at that point that I needed more. I needed to be acquainted with other things, history and philosophy and literature and. So Which on. would help with your artwork. Which bit. would just help me as a human being. Right. It's just yeah. to, you know. Uh, Good background. Yeah, so I went. I, f I, I en enrolled in the University of Buffalo, but I ran out of money. I was poor, and like all poor guys, they get to go to war first. So I 
was drafted into the army and sent to Korea. <clears throat> and um, luckily, even though I was there as a as a rifleman in a in a combat regiment, I was pulled aside and given a job in headquarters and service companies, and so I was close to the fighting, but I never had to fight, and I'm so glad that I never had to do that. Um, and I had the GI Bill. You had? Did you finish your work at Buffalo before you went no, into the war? No, no, I was interrupted by the war. Oh, by the okay. war, and okay. I went back. You got drafted. <coughs> yeah, I got drafted. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and so I finished. I went back, and actually, I was married en route to Korea. And when I came back, I had a nine-month-old daughter. <coughs> and um, but I managed to finish a degree at the University of Buffalo. And I got a teaching certificate. That was my paycheck to keep myself painting. Was uh, your specialty at, in, in art at art in yeah. art at Buffalo? <coughs> or yeah, I, uh, it was a, 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 a bachelor of fine arts degree. Okay. In, uh, with a major in painting. Okay. Uh, even though I had all that background in um, graphic design, uh, I, I just didn't want to do that. So. I finished my degree and I went to, to teach in Angola, New York, a little town about 30 miles north of Buffalo on, the, on Lake Erie. And I taught there for a year. And I knew then that public school teaching was not my game. I just, uh, I, I didn't feel suited for it. So I went to work in a factory. I went to work for Bell Aircraft, became a sign painter. <laughs> Kept myself afloat. Um, well, you had a wife and child, too. I had a wife. I uh, had kept, kept, kept having children because, uh, well, we had six all together. <coughs> this was my first wife. This is not Lauren, who I'm with now. Rosalie was my first wife. And uh, so I kept my GI Bill alive by taking night classes, uh, thinking that someday I'll want to go to graduate school. And I applied for graduate school at Cornell. And I was accepted with an assistantship. And for two years, I was able to paint uninterrupted. Uh, there was enough money with the GI Bill and the assistantship and a little bit of part-time work that I was doing to keep us you know, afloat. We're doing OK. Right. So um, what I learned when I was at Cornell is that People who teach in colleges have this MFA, which I was working on. I didn't know where these people came from. I thought they were bred in some special place. But no, I was qualified uh, with that degree to teach. So I, I wrote 160 letters to various colleges wow. asking if they needed somebody like me. And I got four replies and one interview. and got the job, and I took it. <laughs> it was in Nashville, Tennessee, at the George Peabody College for Teachers. Now, I think people in your library science must know about that school. Because right. there's a library science yeah. program. I don't know whether it still exists, but I really Yeah, it was a it. good one. Yeah. Um, I didn't want to go to Nashville. I didn't want to be in the South. This was in 1959, and the civil rights situation was grim. Um, I was afraid of that situation, uh, but I, it was a job I was offered, and I was assured by people there that it's okay, you can do that. So I, I went and uh, taught at Peabody for seven years. It was great. A uh, little college, 2,000 students. Um, primarily liberal arts, is it? Yes. Okay. Li well, primarily teacher's college. T okay, right. right teacher's right. college, yes. Right. So, you know, all my students were going off into teaching right. somehow. So, um, but I, we were a, a department that said, if you're going to be an art teacher, you have to be an artist. And so we gave them a good background in, in being an artist and, and knowing this, the processes so that when they taught the kids, they came from a, from a viable perspective. So that was good. While I was down there, um, 
Martin Luther King got assassinated, John Kennedy got assassinated, and I joined the civil rights movement. <coughs> uh, I played it fairly safe. I didn't get myself into a lot of trouble, but I helped. I did what I could. Um, and then I was hired by Ralph Bielke, who was the uh, head of the new art department here at Purdue. <coughs> that was in 1966. How did that interview come about? Did they, um, were they well, Ralph there? Bielke was from Buffalo, too, and he had gone to the Albright Art School. And he, knowing that I went to that school, thought, you know, this guy's got a background that I want in my department. So, so okay. he hired me. I was very lucky. He, he was an art educator, and my, the head of my department was an art educator. They, those guys know each other, like in other fields, you know. So that's how that happened. So from 66 until 96, I taught at Purdue. Okay. <coughs> Tell us a little about when you became and what the camp, campus and what we were teaching and you and the well, facilities, am I correct, were in, in... In what was called the Home Economics Building. Uh, I forgot what's Is that the, in Matthews? Matthews, yeah. That's yeah. where they were. They were there, yeah. Uh, there, was a, there were no places to exhibit art on the entire campus. There was no such thing as an art space, which is strange because I came from a little town in the south uh, which was a very, very cultivated place, Nashville. And I came to what I felt it was a cultural desert. And uh, in many ways... Was there uh, room for instruction? There had to be a classroom. Oh, well, sure. You know, we had classroom space. And, uh, but we no made, studio we made space. Do. No studio space for any of the faculty. I never had a studio space that Purdue offered me. Uh, was, yeah. uh, I had always to find my own space. And that, I think that's still true here. Mm -hmm. Um, but we were. This was when we're, the we were department get started when you came, or was well, it already underway? I forget was, when it, it was, got started. It was under art departments traditionally in, in colleges um, get started either in a home economics department where they taught the little girls a little bit of culture, you know, okay. a little painting, a little drawing, you know, a little this, a little that, or from an architecture school where the where the architecture students had to learn how to draw and sure. use color. Right. And so on. So, <coughs> uh, when mm, separate from the idea of having uh, um, an art school, which is an art school, that's where I went to school. Um, <coughs> I don't know that it was ever a good fit. I don't know that it's a good fit right now, <laughs> in my thinking. But uh, because academics and and art. <coughs> can cross over, but I don't think they're a good blend <coughs> because of the way structures are made up in, uh, in academia. <coughs> they're different from what we need to learn and how we need to operate as artists. So uh, yeah, I, I, I helped uh, develop a graduate program. We had some very ec excellent graduate students. <coughs> uh, and that, uh, What was the enrollment of the undergrad? Was there <coughs> quite a few? No, it never was big. Okay. It never was big. Did they come from other, other departments? <coughs> yeah, well, there were basic requirements uh, from, well, from areas in art, like um, interior design and graphics, graphic design, and um, uh, let's see, what, you know, industrial design. Those mm -hmm. people had to learn how to draw. Those people had to learn some things that we knew right. to teach them. All right. And then there are a lot of students, and, and of course, art education. Okay. You know, a, that that had to be uh, uh, founded in uh, in the fine arts. At least that's how Bielke set it up. I don't know how it, uh, if it's changed very much anymore. So I found myself uh, with time to work in my studio. I've always thought and told the people I work for that. You know that I have to be in the studio. Uh, don't put me on a lot of committees. Don't give me a lot of extra stuff to do that uh, will keep me from being an artist. Because you know, if this is a research university, that's my research. <laughs> if you know, <coughs> so it went well. I had time off in the summers. Um, when did they? 
moved to the Quonset huts? <coughs> Very shortly after 66, uh, when I came here, probably 68, yeah, okay. six, a couple of years away. Had they been occupied before you people moved there, or? Uh, the other people had been in those. So buildings. there'd been classes, I mean, instruction. Yeah, was. well, those are, you know, those were World War II <laughs> temporary buildings. <laughs> on a permanent basis, <laughs> yeah, as they, right. people refer to it on. Right. On and on, okay. But we made them work. Sure. Uh, yeah. I gave some lectures over there for some, over the years, about database searching, so I just visited yeah, there. Yeah, so sure. it, was, it, was, it was okay. I, I, you know, we could have had more space, we could have had better space, uh, but I think the way it was set up, we we really got to know each other as faculty and as students and faculty. We had person-to-person -person relationships in that very informal sure. atmosphere that we had all to ourselves, right. and so I think it worked out very well. Was there a place there to do any exhibits at all? In that no, no, oh. there was only space for, for, okay. for teaching. For, uh, uh, gradually, Ralph Bielke, our head, <coughs> um, insisted and got some space. Uh, the first space, I think, was in uh, Stewart Center, a temporary hallway of some kind that we converted into a space. I had a show there. Mm -hmm. And then gradually, uh, there were two galleries uh, set up, um, and now I think there are two galleries, one in the Union and one in Stewart Center, and there's a couple of them now in the new building. Uh, good, pretty good gallery. Oh, we did have gallery space. Yes, I'm sorry. We did have gallery space in the... Uh, Quonset huts? In those Quonset huts. <coughs> okay. And uh, I've, I've, yeah, that, I'm sorry, I forgot about that. Mm -hmm. I was just aware wasn't, of the... Let me add, wasn't there a space, um, you know, where the mural is in Stewart Center when you wanted to go into the Hissy Library? Was there a, some seating space or something? Yeah, there, there, was a, there was a gallery there, and then right. that closed down. And they, sure, they when made, they did all they, that renovation. They, and changed. Then it became library space. So That's that right, yeah. Right. Moved okay. away. Yeah. Um, let's talk a little bit about your exhibitions, and this is something, I'm giving a quote from the Journal Courier. Landscapes have a way of allowing artists to project their feelings into subject, personal feelings about how they relate to the world. And I picked that up. Um, one of the ones was that shock and aftershock film series in the 70s and 80s. Did you do, you remember, recall that one? No. There were some painters of, well, you made some comment about painters of the 1980s, I guess. Oh, did yeah, I? Yeah, that's what it was, okay. I probably did. Yeah. Then you did your 1988 exhibit after your sabbatical in Italy <coughs> and, and uh, Sicily. Oh, shall we? Uh, we we'll talk a little bit about that. And then you also have done some paintings in the West Indies, too. Oh, yes. Yep. Um, that, I gather that that, that 1980 exhibit was at Purdue. Yes. Well, actually, that wasn't the first show that was important. Okay, go ahead. Uh, the first show that was really important was in Chicago. All right. Uh, would that have Let's been the Jan, Jan Cicero Gallery in Chicago? The Phyllis Kind Gallery in 1969. Okay. Um, because um, that show was at Phyllis Kind Gallery. She became one of the first class ga uh, galleries in Chicago and New York after that. And so that started out my commercial connections with, um, with commercial galleries. Okay. Um, and that went on, and I had a show in New York in 1972 at a commercial gallery. Um, and then I had a show in when I was in my sabbatical in 1972-73. I had a show at the Galleria Due Mondi in Rome of paintings like that one you see there, those, the tondo, the circular paintings. I did, oh, 13 years of that. So I was of known for that for a long time. Mm -hmm. And then I started showing in Cincinnati, and uh, then I got invited to shows all over the Midwest and in the East. Um, I showed in Alaska State Museum in Juneau, a visual arts center in Alaska. Uh, and all of this was, you know, before 1980. So mm -hmm. I was pretty, I've been pretty busy all this all right. that time. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I got a lot of so a lot of 
Good stuff. Um, how about the, there was the uh, 25th anniversary <coughs> show that was in 2003? I think you, we participated in that. that yes, yeah. yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, there are probably some other gal exhibits that you probably <coughs> want. Well, I got a long list here. <laughs> uh, um, the local community did you've exi um, there were uh, Alpounders now and then in '04. Yes. Was that had you done exhibits before at the local art museum? Or yes, that was my second show at. Okay. Uh, at the um, Lafayette Museum, I had one uh, oh, in the early '60s, uh, mid '60s, uh -huh. uh, and uh, and I showed at Purdue a couple of times before that, um, or no, a after that. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, yeah, that uh, 2004 show was a retrospective of 50 years of of work including a little drawing I did in Korea. You know, when you're a soldier and there's a war going on, you have a lot, don't have a lot of time to do drawings. <laughs> and, you shouldn't uh, have a lot of time to do drawings. No, indeed. Uh, but I managed to do a, a half a dozen. And uh, it just kind of, uh, you know, that, that, that war was my career for two years. <coughs> I was in Korea for 16 months. <coughs> What t can you, for the researchers, can you tell us the type of art that you enjoy doing? Is it part <coughs> of landscapes or? I've done a lot of things. Okay. Uh, when I was so it's more varied. In other oh, words. absolutely. Good. Yeah, yeah, I've done a lot of experimenting and a lot of various things. Uh, when I was in graduate school, I did <coughs> still lifes based on cubism. Uh, that was my thesis, still life painting. Uh, and I did interiors uh, of the house I lived in. Uh, and landscapes every summer. I always went out in the summertime and did landscapes. <coughs> and somehow managed to do that, even though I've never been a country boy. <coughs> I wanted to go out in the country and paint, paint the country, and that, that's what I did. Yeah. <coughs> and I'm but still doing that. You you liked it. You spent quite a bit of time in Italy. You liked <coughs> Italy and Sicily. Oh yes, or? yeah. Uh, we st my first trip to Italy was in 1970, uh -huh. uh, and then the second trip was a sabbatical in 1972-73. And my daughter Mary Beth <coughs> settled in Italy. She decided that that's where she wanted to live, and she's still there. <coughs> so I went visited her many times. And then after a long period of going to the West Indies, to Antigua, uh, for the summers, <coughs> decided to turn our attention to going to Italy. And that's where I had my uh, first sabbatical there in 1986. And started doing landscapes then <coughs> of Italy. Because this incredible area in Umbria where we lived mm -hmm. uh, just invited me to do that. So uh, ever since then, I've been doing Italian landscapes. Um, Have you been there recent, been <coughs> recently? Or? Uh, well, we didn't get there last summer, and uh, we won't get there this summer. And mm -hmm. uh, one of the and the main reason is that um, the market is so bad that um, without income from from sales. Uh, my, I just don't, don't. We don't have enough money to to, to be there and here as well. So it's it's too bad. That's and also the house that we have been renting for fifteen years, uh, those paintings. I will show those. That these are the paintings around the house and of the house. Uh, is no longer available. It's an old ancient farmhouse which the um, <coughs> local community. They call it a comune. It's sort of like a little, like a county. Declared it un, uninhabitable because it's got all kinds of cracks in the walls and um, earth, earthquake prone and so on. And uh, so, to make the long story short, we can't live there anymore. And so all our stuff is there. We got 25 years of stuff in that house. <laughs> and we gotta go back and get it or send my daughter to get it or give Some, it away or throw it away. Something like that, or, right, yeah, yeah. Right. Let's change gears a little bit. Let's, I'm interested in your, uh, the murals that are outside yeah. the Hicks Undergraduate <coughs> Library, that to two themes, for the class of, the Giveth class of 1933, am I correct? Right. Okay, how did that come about? 
Well, who was it? Uh, Knoy, Maury Knoy, approached me, and um, myself and Brent Cracker, who was my colleague at the time, and uh, asked us if we were interested in doing murals for the undergraduate library. And we both thought it was a good idea, and we talked about it, and negotiated, and <coughs> started doing sketches, <coughs> Brent and I. And um, at some point early on, Brent's health prevented him from taking, uh, taking it on, so it, it fell to me uh, exclusively. And so for many, many months, I was running around to various departments, talking to people and getting information and getting photographs and, 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 and talking to them about how they wanted to be represented in these, in this oh. one particular mural. How did they come up with a scene? When they approached you, did they have some thoughts on what they <coughs> Yeah, well, thinking? we talked about that. Okay. And one, one theme was, was the, uh, the buildings, <coughs> the original buildings on the campus. Right. And the other one was the uh, various achievements of, of departments all over the campus. And so they're two separate ideas. Mm -hmm. So um, it developed. And uh, the library gave me a big space to work in. I don't know if you remember that big space. It was Where did you do the, uh, did it? In the library. Uh, I don't know what building. Were, were what you park? up on Stewart Center in yeah. the second floor? Yeah. Uh, where the old art cars used to be? Yeah, 279? Probably. Oh, something, okay. something in there. Yeah, it was a big was space. <coughs> and because of big paintings, they had to, had to have a big space. And also, we had to figure out some way to fold it and get it in and out of there because it was so large. How did they, uh, did they tell you up front size that they were going to be? Well, okay. we measured the wall. Okay, okay. The two and you walls. decided to put one on each? Yes. Okay, <coughs> okay. Right. Okay. That's so it's, uh, it was a unique um, set of paintings. I've never done anything like that since or, or you know, or sure. before. It was just something I had to take on. It was kind of fun to do. Did they have, how did they, did they have a, a, an opening for it or? Yeah, there was a formal thing. Okay. Uh, Maury Knoy was there, and um, who was it? Was it Hicks? I think Hicks was there because he was involved with the library in some way. Sure. And uh, yeah, they did a formal thing. Right. And the little information piece <coughs> for researchers at the top of the stairs, there's a little uh, plaque, and it'll tell you identify all right. of what's in each of the pictures rather than it'll help you rather than being something close to the portraits themselves, right. the paintings themselves, right. yeah. which, is, which is quite nice. Yeah, good. Uh, let's see. Um, the creative arts has always been kind of a, you talked a little bit about the department. Um, how about the Belkey Memorial Gallery? Is that still, was that something that was in the Quonset Hut? Yes, that was is, there. It doesn't <coughs> exist no, anymore? not that I know of. Okay, no. okay. Now, Bel and then we're talking about the people. Dr. Belkey was founded the department, was the original one. And then there have been well, others you know, he developed he developed it in the direction that it's gone <coughs> now. You know, there was uh, there was uh, there was there were several faculty members sure, okay. who were teaching these various courses before Bielke was hired to make it into a <coughs> real department. Okay, okay, and now with you have the um, Pat, Patty and uh, Rusty Roof <coughs> department. Right. Uh, it changed the name visual and performing in visual and performing arts, mm -hmm. and that. And I imagine the enrollment has has increased. Is there, do you have any idea? I, I don't know. You know, when I when I retired 16 years ago, I walked away. Okay. And okay. <laughs> but you have you visited the facility? Oh yes, okay. I had. A, I've had a show. I've had a show in the in, in that gallery. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> I, I attend uh, some of the social functions sure. they have, but I'm not in any way. <coughs> involved in their uh, in their curriculum or in, their, in any of that stuff. Um, right. Okay. okay. I I had taught for thirty seven years and um, decided that was enough. You guys can have it now. <laughs> I'm moving on to something else. Right. Okay. Right. Were you ever a faculty <coughs> fellow at any of the residence halls? No. Okay. Um, talk about family. Um, well, I have six children. Um, Did any of them go to Purdue? Yes, two of them went to Purdue. Let's see. Uh, two of them got degrees from Purdue. Uh, actually, Susan never got a degree from Purdue, but she took courses there. She's the oldest. <coughs> Steve uh, graduated in uh, 
in um, graphic arts, uh, graphic de design. And uh, Anthony graduated in theater. <coughs> um, none of the others uh, went to Purdue. Mm -hmm. Uh, because they moved on with their mother, they they went to St. Louis and uh, and uh, okay. So um, are, do any of them live close by? Do you no, see? the okay. closest one is in St. Louis. Okay. <clears throat> the next one is in Denver. And then I got <clears throat> two of them in California. Actually, David was in California too, but he died six or seven years ago. <clears throat> and Mary Beth is in in Italy in Bologna. So none of them. That's are the close. one that's been living there for a long time. That's then. right. Does she like it over there? Well, she must. That's her country now. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> she's an American. Everybody there knows she's that. Well, she's that American because you know you just you can't erase that. But, uh, but not she, necessarily she, so. But, but she loves it. Yeah. <coughs> um, any awards or honors that you'd like to share with us? Is anything that comes? Well, I had. Um, um, there was a creative endeavors uh, thing that was set up in our department uh -huh. <coughs> by. Um, uh, Gary Sudano and I helped him do it and uh, I got two or three of those which gave me a semester off with full pay to go work and um, what did you, how did you take advantage of what did you decide to do well I went to Italy okay, okay. <laughs> most of, uh, all of those times <coughs> um, I've had uh, the endowment from uh, the University of Georgia. Uh, we did a workshop. Uh, I helped set up a workshop there, and I was part of that. Uh, there was an Indiana Arts Commission grant that I got with um, <coughs> with the um, museum in Lafayette, and it went to let's see where did it go. It went to Richmond, and it went to uh, that other school. Anyway. I had a show that went that, that traveled to these three uh, different museums. Um, other than that, I think my main achievement is <coughs> the work you've done. is um, being associated with first class galleries, which uh, kept my got my work, and uh, especially more recently the uh, Alan Stone Gallery, which is one of the premier galleries in the country. And where is that located? In <coughs> New York. Okay. And um, I mean, he has a list of very distinguished artists that I'm really happy to be associated with. <coughs> and um, do you still have, do you have something on display? Are you still there at the moment? Well, at the moment, they have a lot of my work, and we're in the process of getting my old work back. And they are reorganizing, and the future of the gallery is <coughs> in flux right now. Okay. It's a business, and sometimes that happens. Uh, Alan Stone died I, uh, two weeks after he showed up here in my studio to pick out this show um, that was in New York. He died in his sleep. And so uh, his daughters and his ex-wife, his, his widow, um, are involved in the estate. And it's a little messy. Uh, so that's part of the problem. So we don't know where we're at with this. But anyway, I'm, I'm associated with him as uh, his gallery, and I'm also associated now with John Natsula's gallery in Davis, California. So I've got these two guys with my work, and uh, okay. nobody's selling anything right now. We'll see. Okay. <coughs> um, professional associations? Did you did you belong to any art associations at all, or uh, in Nashville? There was a Nashville Artist Guild, and we had shows, and we had meetings, and we had social things. Mm -hmm. But there's nothing like that here. Sure. Okay. okay. Uh, I I've never really wanted to do that sort of thing. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. How about a Purdue tradition? Do you have a tradition of Purdue that you'd like to share with us? A tradition. Such as sometimes people examples that I've gotten is say the Boilermaker Special or commencement. <coughs> Sometimes the Lion Fountain. You know, <coughs> that's a, that's another thing that I've never been. A, been okay. How about an outstanding in. event? 
We have maybe. Sounds like <coughs> my retirement. There you go. <laughs> that brings up my last question my, my is about yes. uh, retirement. Landscapes is a subject artists have dealt with for centuries, and that was something, quote, I picked up from the Journal Courier. What have you been doing in retirement that you'd like to share with us? I've been painting. Okay. I've been <coughs> just pursuing what I've always been doing. Uh, okay. I've always considered myself a painter first, and then I had this teaching job that supported my habit. <laughs> And uh, that doesn't mean I, I, I didn't enjoy teaching and I didn't have good students, because I did. Um, but it was always an offshoot of my main considerations in my life, and that was to be a painter, be a good, as good as I could get. Sure, okay. In closing, I'm going to leave it. Do you have any closing remarks or something I forgot to ask? Anything comes to mind? <coughs> well... <coughs> I'll have to think about that. I guess you covered pretty much everything. Okay. Um, you've been doing, and you've got, continuing with your painting. Which <coughs> continue really with my painting. Right. I also In a studio where we're sitting, which is very nice. Right, and I also continue to play squash. <laughs> at Purdue? At Purdue, yes. Okay. <coughs> right now we're playing at, uh, <coughs> at Lambert because, you know, they're rebuilding sure. that other thing. Yeah. But uh, <coughs> those two things, and... Uh, Keeping in touch with my family and seeing how they're doing, uh, you know, I have, like, you know, my my, I have two sons who are professional graphic artists. I have one daughter who is a professional violist, <coughs> married to a very well-known composer, uh, who who has written work for her, who she's composed all over the all over the world, because he's Cambodian and uh, by origin and has taken his music and and groups to China, to Taiwan, to Korea, to Thailand, oh. all over the all over the East and also, you know, he's 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 terrific and, and a lot of fun to be with. Mm -hmm. And uh, my son who Tony the youngest <coughs> who got a degree in acting uh, hasn't had a hasn't had very much chance to do to do any of that, so um, his acting career sort of got sidelined. But uh, it's is he in New York? He's or? he's in uh, Sacramento. Oh, okay. <laughs> We're going to have a big reunion in uh, June. Everybody will be there, including my daughter from Italy. She oh, you're having a family reunion? <coughs> yeah. Wonderful. We're in Sacramento, or no? It's going to be a Tahoe. Oh, okay. Uh, they they did a family reunion for me for my 80th birthday, uh, to uh, last year. Um, it was a total surprise. How did they get? How did it work? Well, out? they did it. They did it by making it into where a they, Thanksgiving. It was a Thanksgiving get together, uh -huh. and they did it in St. Louis, and everybody was there. Wonderful. And, and you were really surprised. Absolutely, just astounded. As a matter of fact, even the. My retirement party was a total surprise. I had no idea there was that was going on. <coughs> Lauren is very good at that sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> you need a little uh, help along the way, yeah, I think. Yeah. So you know, I'm I'm still working. You know, my main drive is to continue is to, is painting, to yeah. just make the paintings and right. uh, and hope I can get them out there someplace. Right. Very yeah. good. Thank you very much, Dr. Pound. I really appreciate.